Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, get ready to hear another video. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take a little time. Like I said, I'm going to do the video on the credits tomorrow. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is <laughs> T and the <laughs> fish. Okay. They're in our background. There was something that I'm supposed to be telling all of you, but here's the thing. The more tired I am, the more I tend to forget. Now, my forgetting is not a simple thing. It is a problem I've had since the operation. And the fact that I have been able to accomplish the things that I... But you remember... Don't worry about that. God. Sorry. After the operation, the only two things that I have been able to hold on to is Scripture and law and it's ironic that they both go hand in hand law comes from scripture and scripture is the relationship I have with my God so hey those are the only two things I literally can hold on to everything else I have to take with a grain of salt just a grain just a grain because I don't like a lot of salt I don't even care if it's Himalayan or sea or any other type of salt don't really like salt oh man you need a little bit of salt in your life look I'm going to give you some salt you better leave me alone Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to mention a couple of things. Now, uh, there were quite a few people who told me about the programs. As I told you guys, I had this program on my computer called Crazy Talk. I, I already had it. As a matter of fact, I don't just have one Crazy Talk. We're going to let this crazy fool talk for a second. And I, I can mimic the voice like I did with Innocent, but I chose not to do that now because I'm a little rusty. So give me a second. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if I can, can have, have your, your attention, attention please. please, this breaking news has just come in. We just received word that. Okay, and that was the latest news for today. I want to thank you once again for joining us here today on It's Your News. When the next time we're here on It's Your News, we'll have news for you, and you will not believe the news that you will hear. May you all have a very good day. Goodbye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the video overlay. You see, Crazy Talk uses a lot of systems resources. So I can't use Crazy Talk and do these videos at the same time. It's just not possible. That's why you weren't able to see his mouth moving in sync. It's called Crazy Talk because you can accentuate the head movement, but I'm going to turn him back this way because he was originally facing this way. I'm going to turn him this way. And then I'm going to save, save, save what you want, but don't save me in my direction. Take, take, take what you need. Oh, Lord. This should have already been saved. So we're going to put uh, C R A Z Y. Crazy Eon. Okay. We're gonna, that's what we're going to name this because I can perfect it later. Now, I can use him or several other characters. I choose him because he looks so stupid. You know, big ears, you know, like uh, Huey P. P. Newton, you know what I mean? Not the Huey P. Newton from, you know what I'm talking, mad! Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen... There are some things, I'm going to shut this down. Like I said, I've had crazy talk, and if you see all the different little crazy talks I got, animator and all of that stuff, I have what I need to take care of that. So I want to thank those of you who communicated what I had not really used crazy talk 8. I had 7 and 6 prior, 7, 6, and 5, the version 7, 6, and 5. I've been using crazy talk since 2012. And so I'm familiar with the program. And so I want to thank those of you who took the time to let me know about Crazy Talk. There are some other programs that do something similar. But now that I look at Crazy Talk, I can see that it is more than likely more of that program the individual is using than another program. Or that that program that they are using is mimicking Crazy Talk. In other words, they are copying Okay, so that being the case, let's see if we can get some water going in the background. 
Oh, it says it already is paused, but it shouldn't be paused. So we're gonna get we're gonna get some action in our background. Let's see if I do that. If nothing happens, nothing happened. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I was bringing up the issue of memory because some of you will say, "Well, you 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 talk about one subject and you get off the subject, you don't come back to it," because there are some issues with memory, and it's the bad part about it is it's about to get worse. That's why I'm definitely telling everybody that I don't have a lot more time to be doing this. It's already started to get worse. Now look, when I came out this way, I came out this way to relax. So Because the more stress I'm under, the more of an effect it has. So the fact that I keep telling you guys that I'm exhausted, I've been doing this nonstop. Well, you need to take a break. I can't take a break. There are too many of you out there that need help. Look, ladies and gentlemen, people are about to be foreclosed on. They're about to lose everything. Okay, the kitchen sink, their shirt, their towels, their everything. They're about to lose everything. I don't want to see people lose everything. Do you follow me? Do you feel me? Okay, I don't want to see people lose everything. So, with that being the case of not wanting people to lose everything, what I want to do is the best I can to help you okay I have people who are contacting me on a regular basis and they're asking me about their personal business it's just a lot of them want me to explain to them how to do the money orders ladies and gentlemen to be quite honest with you I can't explain to you how to do the money orders because I haven't done them in a while I think the last time I seriously did a money order was probably 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell it to you in English because some of you guys are going to misunderstand me. I don't have any debts. Okay, I pay for what I need and if I don't need it, I don't pay for it. Literally. I don't have any debts because I don't live outside my means. Ask anybody who knows me, they'll tell you I'm not flashy. I don't wear jewelry. I don't care for jewelry. I don't need to wear a piece of gold to feel good about myself. You know, I don't get me wrong. I do enjoy my life. I enjoy who I am as a person. I enjoy the way I am as a person. I enjoy being simple. Okay, being simple is fine. Not everybody can be simple. But see, simple is not a condition where I'm simple because of circumstances. No, I'm simple because of choice. Look, Biggie Small said, more money, more problems. He ain't never lied. You sure know what you talking about, is what they would say to Biggie. Because Biggie was right. The more money you got, the more problems you got. Why? Because you just get a lot more things and you have to worry about them other things. So when I first came out here, I went and got myself a surveillance system. A Wi-Fi. Infrared. Can see it in the dark. Surveillance system. I'm not joking when I tell you this, okay? I, I promise you, I am not joking. I have a surveillance system that I have to connect I said I would start hooking up the cameras today. Ladies and gentlemen, I found that if I'm going to be leaving this property and somebody is going to try to come in here and take things and break in, well, they're not going to find all the components in one spot. So I took the cameras, put the cameras in one spot. I took the actual box that records and put that in one spot. I took all of the cables and connections and put those in another spot. They would have to spend hours like I did looking for it because guess what I hit it so well that I couldn't even find them it took me five hours to find all the parts today that's why I couldn't get started and I literally had to pray to my God <laughs> because I couldn't find them and it was driving me crazy but oh really you weren't already there you had to drive there huh mm-hmm you know you're lying. No mother, you lying. Don't talk about driving you crazy. Ain't nobody got to drive you, mother. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna hurt him. Matter of fact, I don't think he's gonna make it to the next video. Yeah, that's what I thought. I apologize. Let's get back to y'all. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, the memory problems are memory problems. They're not something I make up. Every single day, especially over the last five months, I've been noticing it's been getting a lot worse. People say, oh, you just misplaced a couple of things. That's no big deal. You know, I forget. <sighs> ladies and gentlemen, in 2000, excuse me, 1996, sorry, I said 2000. 1996, while at home, I ended up on the floor for three days. Could not get up, could barely move. For three days on the floor. So when you hear about people, I've fallen and I can't get up, that happens a lot. Doesn't happen just to old folks. I was 20, that time, I was 28 years old. 27, 28, don't know. Uh, 96, almost 30. On the floor, couldn't do anything. That's how we knew something was wrong. That's how we knew that uh, nobody knew. I didn't call anybody. I didn't call anybody because I didn't feel like calling anybody. And if I did call anybody, I think I may have spoken to people over the telephone, but I didn't tell them what was going on. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, give me one second. Because somebody left a gap. And I don't know why they would do that. This is the Gap Band live, and they getting up early in the morning because they got to go find themselves something. All right, that's the Gap Band, and they're doing it live early in the morning. Ladies and gentlemen, that was 1996. In 2003, this had to have been 2003. I'm in a new apartment. I have helped my friend manage a property where he converted a $20,000 investment to a $531,000 profit. Well, no, a $331,000 profit, $531,000 total sale on a property that was worth only $179,000. That's how much was owed on it. But because that was the booming system and he had somebody like me working with him, saving him money and cutting corners and getting things done and making things look better than what they were actually, he made $300,000. $31,000. Sold the property for $550,000. Excuse me one second. I'll be right back. Sorry. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to... I said excuse me one second. Because there was a bug on the screen door and I was letting him outside but now I want to tell you about my memory I said to myself earlier today that I was going to make myself some tater tots I literally said yeah I'm not hungry but I can use the snacks so I was gonna do some tater tots you know who 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 could turn down some taters you know I gotta have me some taters <laughs> I'm just smashing your taters anyway I turned on the skillet to heat it up Ladies and gentlemen, I turned on the skillet to heat it up an hour ago. I joke with you not. I've had two telephone conversations. I did that other video that was just put up. The skillet has been on the entire time. Now, it wasn't on high, but it's been on. Now, can you imagine forgetting something like that and burning up your whole house? Because you take off? See, when I leave, I have to make sure I go through everything and make sure I didn't leave anything on. I wouldn't have known the skillet was on unless I went by the door because the stove is right by the door and I could feel the heat coming off the side of it on my arm. Not the fire, just the heat from the stove. So that's the stuff I'm talking about. No, everything is okay. I manage and have been managing for quite some time. Getting back to 2003-2004, Mendes apartment and I gotta leave. I gotta go meet somebody. You know, I told him I'll be meeting him. 
and I was leaving early I couldn't find my keys man I'm dressed and everything and I could not find my keys in for two hours I don't kid you I tell you the truth for two hours I could not find my keys ladies and gentlemen my keys were in my right hand the entire time now I, I, I told that to people and they didn't understand it so let me help you so you can understand what I'm trying to say this was 2003 2004 don't remember exactly what year I just know at that time that's the apartment I was in so I'm certain it was 2003 2004 ladies and gentlemen I'm right-handed so while I'm going through the drawers and going through every piece or article of clothing to make sure I didn't leave it in the pocket my keys they're in my right hand I'm right-handed so while I'm going through all of these pockets and everything I am clenching the keys and still going through the pockets and not hearing the keys in my hand the whole time two hours how do I know it was two hours because like I said I was getting ready to go meet someone finally had to tell him I'm sorry I will not be able to meet you and then I explained to him what happened it's just this happened to be a person who was aware that I had memory issues because they had experienced being around me most people don't get it most people don't even get to see that I explain it to people and you know the first thing they tell me oh that's not a big deal shut the f up you have no idea how much of a big deal it is like I told you when I was a teenager people would come up to me and say all right go ahead go ahead and they would come up in groups have stuff written down on paper all right all right what well, the last time we talked what, what did we talk about and what did I say exactly what I said in the order I said it and I would tell them exactly what they said and I tell them exactly how they said it and they would make bets with each other they ain't supposed to be betting but they would be making bets that I couldn't do it and they would lose every single time because I remembered everything I heard and remember everything I said that was my memory that's why I didn't have a problem in school my mother told me one thing she said if you want to get A's and B's in school the only thing you have to do is pay attention to the teacher just remember everything on the test they give the same test every single year to every single student they give the same exact test so while they're giving that same exact test whatever's on that test is how they're gonna speak in class so when they're speaking in class, if you pay attention to what they're saying, you can't help but get an A or B on your test. That was my mama. My mama wasn't no stupid person. My mama wasn't no fool. That's why everybody liked her. That's why all the friends that she had liked being around her and coming around her and talking. See, my mother was that way. My father was that way. So to this day, all of my brothers and sisters, people come to them for advice. Why? It just runs in this particular side of the family. I'm the person that all my friends came to for advice. To this day, my phone rings because people want advice on something. I'm not Abby. Abby don't have the knowledge I have on these things. So, I did a video, and I was watching it in the background before I did this. And it was the video that I said I had been waiting to do this video for quite some time. Well, I was listening to that video because let's just say I said some things in that video that I was even impressed with and I'm not joking ladies and gentlemen this is uh, Angie Stone in the last video I played nothing but Angie Stone this is uh, iHeartRadio's Angie Stone so this is the playlist uh, she's speaking about bottles and cans y'all I'd rather be picking up bottles and cans okay this is Angie y'all now let me go ahead and explain to you guys about the memory those of you who think it ain't no big deal to forget this or forget that by the time all of this is said and done it has been brought to my attention don't worry about how it's been brought to my attention that I am gonna be you remember what Nebuchadnezzar had to go through no many of you have no idea about Nebuchadnezzar so go back and read. I believe it is the 
latter fourth and fifth chapter of Daniel. Go back and see what Nebuchadnezzar went through. Mine will not be mine will not be because of arrogance. I've already been through what I need to go through because of thinking too much of myself. Okay, I've already been through all that. That's why you don't hear me. I'm a genius! You'll hear me say that all the time because I am a genius. Sorry, the truth, I don't have a problem speaking on the truth. But you won't hear me talking about how great I am or I'm better than you and your mama couldn't touch me. You know, you won't hear me doing stuff like that because it wouldn't be true anyway. That's not me. I do not believe that I'm better than the next man. I don't compare myself to the next man because the next man can't compare to me. He is not me. He hasn't been through what I've been through, so he doesn't have my experiences. So I cannot compare him to me. He cannot compare himself to me because he doesn't see life the way I see life. So he wouldn't make the same choices if placed in the same circumstances that I'm in. That's why we're all judged individually because we all have different perspectives for which we operate on this planet. I don't know why people can't get that. We all have different experiences. We've all made different mistakes. Which is why I don't get why there are so many people out there who think, because I made a mistake in the past, that they're better than me. That they get to judge me. When I know that they've done things far worse than I. And that much I do know. Now when I say far worse than I, I'm not talking about far worse, 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 sir. That type of worse. No, but I am saying far worse than myself. What do I mean by far worse? I mean that these individuals who attempt to judge me don't realize that, well, what does the scripture say? With the judgment you were judging, by it you will be judged? Yeah, I don't think they realize that. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to excuse me one second. Uh, this is the four tops, and the only problem is a commercial was coming on, and I wanted to get past the commercial. So that's all that is, okay? And so getting past that commercial was the thing. And now that I've gotten past the commercial, I can move on. It's just they won't let me do my system the way I want it. And so I'm just going to have to get over it. But that's all right. This is Am I Dreaming by Atlantic Star. Now, let's get back to the memory issues, ladies and gentlemen. The fact that I can sit up here and show you guys case law all day long, that is my knack. Because that's what the God I serve allowed me to have. Go ahead. See if you know anybody like me. See if you know anybody who knows as much as I do about the subjects I talk about. I'm not bragging about that. I'm telling you straight up. I don't have that ability on my own. I have that because that's what I asked him for. 2001. See, there is a scripture in the Bible. That's right. I'm going to show it to you because I, I opened my mouth. You opened your mouth? Yes. Yeah, see, if I mention something, I have to show it to you. That's my rule. And I've already let one slide. I can't let the other one slide. I mentioned something earlier, but this one I have to show you because guess what? It literally says if you do this, then you will have knowledge. So let's go. What's the text for today? Wisdom of the world is foolishness with God. So I don't have worldly wisdom. Wish I did. Then I could be a foolish person. I know it sounds stupid, doesn't it? Well, that's how the world sounds to God. Sorry. It's the only way to explain it because people wouldn't get it. Am I dreaming? No, I'm not dreaming, ladies and gentlemen. It says, look, my son, if you accept my sayings and treasure up my commandments and make, uh, excuse me, by making your ear attentive to wisdom, wisdom, well, it's not talking about, wait, hold on, uh, Atlantic Star, as much as I care about you guys, you guys are interfering with my flow. It's not talking about earthly wisdom. The Bible says wisdom comes from Jehovah. 
A wise person listens and takes in more instructions. A man of understanding acquires skillful direction. But if you go to the first chapter, verse number, I think it is verse number 7, if I'm not mistaken. It's been a while. So, verse number 7. The fear of Jehovah is the beginning of knowledge. Only fools despise wisdom and discipline. So wisdom starts from him. Everybody thinks wisdom comes with age. Ladies and gentlemen, wisdom does not come with age. Wisdom has nothing to do with age. Wisdom has nothing to do with experience. Wisdom comes from Jehovah. Wisdom comes from listening to him. If you don't believe me, let's do this again. By making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to discernment, being able to distinguish right from wrong. And raise your voice for discernment if you keep seeking for it as for silver and you keep searching for it as for hidden treasure then you will understand the fear of Jehovah and you will find the very knowledge of God for Jehovah himself gives wisdom and out of his mouth comes knowledge and discernment so it says we need to keep seeking keep asking keep looking for these things well ladies and gentlemen I made it a point to ask him for this three times a day not at the same times not in the same words just three times a day that was my constant request three times a day I continued to ask him for this and he gave it to me oh don't worry about it it's not me wait hold on <laughs> hold on uh, I gotta show y'all this is uh, it's a rule it has to be backed up at least twice so in Matthew the seventh chapter let's go on the seven Matthew the seventh chapter says, stop judging that you may not be judged for what judgment you are judging you will be judged and what measure you're measuring out it will be measured out back to you in other words you reap what you sow that's all that's saying okay but he goes on to say hey keep on asking and it'll be given to you keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and it will be open to you. For everyone asking receives and everyone seeking finds. And everyone knocking or to everyone knocking it will be open. Ladies and gentlemen I kept asking. But I didn't ask doubting that it would happen. I asked knowing it would happen. And that's the result. However although I have had memory problems since the operation ladies and gentlemen you cannot be clinically dead for 18 minutes and not suffer brain damage it's impossible you cannot have a temperature in excess of 126 degrees and in excess of 120 degrees for more than three weeks and there not be brain damage oh so that is you gonna find yourself right outside permanently go go sit down and get out of here before you get hurt I'm sorry I apologize ladies and gentlemen he just can't help it he's he's stupid like that yes yeah, say something now I apologize all right back to you all those of you who think and there are many of you because you tell me so I'm not speaking as to something to put myself on a pedestal that I know a lot and that I have all this experience I don't have all this experience yes 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 I've been around the law since for a while now but I've had my bumps and I've had my grimes there as I told you there was a guy his name was Sam Davis and Sam used to do videos and Sam used to help people with mortgages and taxes and a bunch of things and Sam talked about a friend of his that went in the court and he would go in with a pen and paper and they call his name and he says, all right, I'm ready to contract. Who's ready to contract? So next thing you know, they tell him to have a seat and then they come to him and tell him the case been dismissed. Ladies and gentlemen, literally, I said to myself, man, that's, what I, that's where I like to get to. I just wanted to understand I'm ready to contract. Who's ready to contract? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm at that point now. That's why I can create contracts with arbitration clauses. I told you, Bradley Christopher Stark, he came up with a key component, the Federal Arbitration Act. That was the only thing we were missing. Been trying to do that for years. 
That was the only thing we were missing, is an arbitration clause. That's why I give Bradley Christopher Stark his credit. I can go into a court. Y'all want to play? I want to play. That's why you hear me say that. If y'all want to play, I want to play. You want to play presumption? We'll play presumption. You want to play technicalities? By all means, who can get more technical than me is what I tell them. They don't want to play with me, ladies and gentlemen, anymore. And the God that I serve, as long as I am not disrespectful to them, that is the agreement. As long as I am not disrespectful to them, they ain't going to do no lasting harm to me. That's why I operate the way I do. I'm not expecting any of you to do what I do. I promise you I'm not expecting any of you to do what I do. Because you shouldn't have to go through something like this just to get redress. I just got off the phone with somebody telling me that there's someone out there who is promising to help save people's homes. And they're going in through bankruptcy. And it's a particular type of bankruptcy. However, this is not my process, so I can't tell it to you guys. I don't know the whole thing anyway. I just know some of it. I can't tell it to you guys because the person hasn't given me their permission. This is not my process. Do you understand? I didn't create it. Somebody figured something out. They come to me. I ask them, you don't mind if I tell it to everybody? And they say, no, I don't mind. And I tell it to everybody. But if they haven't given me permission, I can't tell it to you. That doesn't, that, it wouldn't make any sense if I tried to tell you something somebody else told me in confidence. The Bible says the God I serve hates a revealer of secrets. He, he hates a snitch. So I can't be like your mama. You know, yeah, I said it. Because there are people out there who, well, just tell it to me anyway. I won't tell nobody. Haven't you heard people say that? Tell it to me. I won't tell nobody. Well, the fact is, you're asking me to violate somebody's confidence for your selfish anus. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people have been asking me a lot of selfish questions. So how they can benefit from something. Like the gentleman who I told all of you said that he had been doing this for 40 years. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing he says, well, I just want to see proof that it works. Okay, well, you go ahead and you get your proof that it works. But I ain't, <laughs> I don't owe you a dime. Ain't nobody requiring me to show you a thing. You ignorant mother, I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, it works out like this. The very fact that I can tell you guys things while doing a video and then mention it, and then all of a sudden you see that the law agrees, that should let you know that I know what I'm talking about. That's the first thing. The second thing is, the fact that I'm speaking on subjects that you were thinking about yesterday, and you go and you look, and I just did a video on it, and it just came to your mind yesterday, that should also tell you something. Go ahead and see if anybody else is talking about what you hear me talking about, ladies and gentlemen, in the detail and the depth of what you hear me talking about. I dare you. To find somebody who goes through as much details as I do. Who shows you everything they're talking about. Go ahead. Now there's not going to be many people who can do that. Why? Because as I told you I made a promise to myself. If I bring something up I have to show it to a person. Why? Because that was my rule. See as growing up as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. We were often having to prove what we knew when we knocked on people's doors. Yeah, I know, we still have to do it, but not to that point. We don't go there no more. We, I used to spend hours, had tons of books in my briefcase, would have tons of conversations with people. Not anymore. You say this, and I say that, and then you stick to that, and then I show you this, and you want to hold on to it? I'll let you hold on to what you got. What, what, what did we just read about the foolish one? Okay. What did we just read about the person who doesn't listen? So when I show you what Jehovah says, I'm not looking for your opinion. If I show you what he says in one spot and then show you what he says in another spot like I just did, keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. If I show you that, and then you decide, well, no, I'm going to believe this, then you knock yourself out. I ain't got time to argue with you. You want to argue, you better argue with scripture. So go ahead and argue with him. I'm sure you'll win that battle. <laughs> Man. Because you got skills. So, 
the way things are going to work out is by the time all is said and done, I will barely be able to handle sentences with people. Now, I, 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 I know one thing for a fact. Inside, you know that quiet voice? I'll be 100%, okay? I would be 100%. So inside, mentally, I'll be able to handle everything. Every, 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 everything. Okay? However, on the outside, people will see somebody who looks like he can't hold a conversation or a thought. Looks like he ain't nowhere near everybody else. That he's somewhere out in the universe. And that won't be the case. I'll be trapped. I call it, I've written a couple of stories because I've known it was coming for quite some time. I call it the mind trap. It's what people, in my opinion, people with Alzheimer's and people who go through senility or dementia, it's what they're going through. We keep thinking that these people are mindless, that they can't think right. No, it's what's coming out is not what they're intending to come out of their mouths that they are 100% there they just can't express themselves pretty much like a child with autism now don't don't take my word for it go and look at a child with autism and then go look at somebody who has dementia or Alzheimer's and tell me if you don't see the correlation okay a child with Alzheimer's there was one story young man I, I told this to a young lady because her son has a uh, her son has ADHD he's labeled as autistic and the child is 10 years old matter of fact she just emailed me today but I sent her an article that I heard about while I was on vacation I used to listen to NPR National Public Radio and they did a show called uh, man now I can't think of the name of that show Dag nabbit, uh, something radio. Dang it, I can't think of the name of that show. It's like a science program. It came on Sunday nights and it repeated Saturday night. And I would listen to that show, and they did a couple of interesting stories that caught my attention. But they did one story about a child who had autism, and the parents, and the parents didn't know. Said the child was doing fine, and all of a sudden, one day, nothing was ever the same. Nothing dramatic happened or anything. It's just everything changed. Well, they eventually were able to communicate with the child. The child reached, uh, I think, 16, 17 years old. And they were able to communicate with the child through the repeated movies and Disney Channel shows they, that he watched. They found out that he was trying to communicate with them in the phrases of the Disney Channel. Well, after he, a little bit of therapy, he was able to have regular conversations. And he would explain, they did an interview with him, that he was trying to speak, was trying to tell them what was going on, was trying to tell them what was on his mind, but just wasn't able to. Said he heard everything that they were saying. So that's why I'm letting you know. And this, I heard this story last, mm, probably February, March. Of, uh, not last February, March. I mean, this year, February, March. And that's how I can tell you that I know for sure that people with Alzheimer's, dementia, that they can hear. Yeah, sometimes I'll do videos like this, ladies and gentlemen, where it's talking about something other than the law, something other than mortgages, something other than debt. Talking about people. Talking about life. I've suffered COVID twice. And by experiencing COVID twice, um, those people who think COVID is a joke, y'all got problems. You think COVID is the flu or something, y'all got problems. You, you need some help. Because I'm still suffering from the effects. I'm still having to catch my breath from time to time. And let me let you know so that you get it. Drinking water. And then all of a sudden I take a 
deep breath while I'm drinking water and the water goes down and I'm coughing up. Ladies and gentlemen, that didn't start happening until I went through that COVID stuff. Okay? And in an opportune time, I'm taking a breath when I've already just taken a breath. But the breath I'm taking the second time is a deeper breath. So as to catch my breath as if I lost it or something. That junk happens without warning, without notice, and it happens all during the day. I went outside today. Now in here, like I said earlier today, it's 89 degrees in here. It doesn't feel 89. It feels like 75 degrees right now. But it was about 92 outside, and it felt about 80, 80 degrees in here. So I go outside, and I just go to put the tents, the pins, back into the ground because when we have the strong winds the pins the wind wants to pull the tent up and you know send it miles away like a air, hot air balloon but they're very well put into the ground and I just go to make sure that none of the pins come up and a couple of them the straps had come off because of the angle of the pin and I had to turn it around that was about six pins came back in had to catch my breath because the temperature outside, temperature inside, different. The thinness of the air outside and the thinness of the air inside, different. I cannot handle the change in climates like that. That's why I got away from the city. That's why every fall, every winter, and we've been going through fall weather here where the it's been cold in the morning, hot in the evening. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it was 47 degrees this morning. 95 degrees this evening. I have a real difficult time adjusting the temperatures like that. So, when I say I'm not going to be able to do this much longer, I know I'm not going to be able to do this much longer. Think about it. How many people you know that have an opportunity to tell you, well, the doctors diagnosed me with Alzheimer's, and they said it's going to be progressive. So I just want to let you know it's coming. How many people you know that's been able to tell you that and right on the money they suffer Alzheimer's? Well, in my conversations with my God, he has let me know that I am going to be suffering something similar to Alzheimer's and dementia, combination of both. Not Alzheimer's or dementia. It's just going to appear that way to others. That is for my protection. That is not a punishment. The vacationing 2012 and 2016 and 2018. It was 2019. So 2012, 2016, 2019. That was to prepare me for all of this junk that's going on now. I can't handle death. I hate death. I stay away from death. I didn't go to my mother's funeral because I hate death. What a passion. It took my best friend dying. And that was it. I had enough. But then there was a young man named Ray Ray. I did an, I worked in an apartment building. Ray Ray was a tenant. Uh, a tenant. <laughs> he was a tenant. His mother and he and his friend and his friend's mother, they all lived in the apartment building in separate apartments, but they were best friends. And Ray Ray got shot one day in the back three times as he was coming into the apartment building. Like I told everybody, I was the person who go into the apartment buildings in the city that were violent, had gangs and all that stuff, and I'd go and I'd clean them up without having to do any work. And I literally got rid of all the gang members the building had turned completely around it turned completely around so much to the fact that people were able to go outside the front of the building and sit down with their families and talk and enjoy themselves without worrying about anything until these idiots came by fired three shots and all three shots hit Ray in the back Ray was an alright little kid and shooting that young man in the back and watching him take his last breath yeah I had enough of death and then I had another friend this is Ray what year was Ray 1993 
and around the same time, 1996, a young man named Mr. Toriano. I had a best friend named Toriano, so this Toriano is not that Toriano. Toriano, he, smart kid. I mean, you talk about somebody who was way beyond me. I was six years older than Toriano, and I knew his family. I knew his brother. His brother and I were friends. And Toriano had a conversation with me one day, and he said, you know, I often sit around and I wonder where did God come from? And I couldn't handle that conversation. I literally, at my age, even though I'm older than him, I could not handle that conversation. His thinking was far deeper than mine. And I told him, I said, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I said, that could literally drive you crazy. Now, I was technically wrong for telling him that because that's what people say when they want to avoid a conversation with someone because they can't handle the depth of the conversation. I told his brother after that conversation with him, I said, keep an eye on him. I said, he needs somebody to talk to. Ray, uh, Ray, sorry. Toriano went to a park one morning, pulled out a gun and shot himself in the head. The fact I had not seen Toriano for maybe three years or so, and by that time I was in a different state and I got word that he had done this and I was so angry with myself that I was not there to talk with that young man but I could not there was nothing I could do with do for him because he was far beyond me mentally literally that was a bright kid and when I say bright I mean this was a smart kid and I don't think anybody knew the depth of his intelligence I think he hid it very well from people but I got to experience it just in one conversation and realized that he was way smarter than I was are you saying that you were smart I'm saying at that time that's what everybody said about me and I'm saying that this man if I had to say somebody was smart and you have not heard me talk about anybody being smart this kid could run circles around them And yet, he shot himself in the head and killed himself in the middle of a park. I hate death. But both at Ray Ray's funeral, at my best friend's funeral, and at Toriano's funeral. Both my best friend Kevin and Toriano, before the family got to see them, I was permitted to see them. Toriano, because I was from a different state and I couldn't stay in town, and so they let me see him before his family got to see him. I didn't even get a chance to, because I had to leave, I didn't get a chance to stay around and speak to his brother or anything. As a matter of fact, I haven't spoke to his brother, Victor, since then. And they're from Belize. And Victor is a, Victor is an all right young man. Uh, he and his wife. As a matter of fact, his wife and his wife's brother and I were best friends. All right, let me just go ahead and say I hate death. I can't stand it. The God that I serve knows that I hate death. A lot of people are about to die. All right, we're going to show you one more thing, and then I'm going to get off of this video. This is 49 minutes, y'all. We're in the book of Matthews. We're going to go to the 24th chapter. Many, some of you have, many of some of you have seen this chapter you know what it is. This is the chapter where Jesus tells them about what's going to happen in the last days. That's what verse 3 is. Tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your presence. His second coming? Not his second coming, not his third coming, but the sign of his presence. Because he didn't say he was just coming back. Can't come back in the flesh. He's coming back to do some things. But prior to that there were some things he had to get ready that's why he said he was going to prepare a place the preparation didn't take two thousand years ladies and gentlemen the place that he was preparing when he came back to receive them to himself this was the presence he was talking about okay but anyway 
And then the conclusion of the system of things. So this is that part. We're going to go to 21. Not going to read the whole thing because if you want to read the whole thing, go read the whole thing. Okay? This thing is like uh, 24 chapters. How many verses? 47, 48? Let's see. 40. Oh, look at that. 51. Okay. 24 chapters, 51 verses. Knock yourself out. Okay? That's not the reason for this. We're going to stick within this context right here. Okay? Keep praying that your flight may not occur in the winter time. When you're going through troubles. Most people tend to go through a lot of stress during the winter. That's why more people commit suicide during the winter than any other time of year. Go ahead and look at the statistics. Or on a Sabbath day. Why on a Sabbath day? Because usually when on a Sabbath day people are relaxing. They don't even suspect anything. Okay? For then there will be great tribulation. The word tribulation means great trouble. So to put great in front of a word that means great trouble, it signifies great, great trouble. Okay? Great tribulation such as not occurred since the world's beginning until now. No, nor will occur again. So this thing has never happened. So you can't tell me what it's going to be like. I can't tell you what it's going to be like. Because it's never happened before. So, you think of the worst thing that could happen, then you can think of this period. It's going to be worse than that because it lets you know that you can't even imagine it. It says it has not occurred since the world's beginning until now, no will occur again. In fact, this is a fact, this is not an imaginary situation. Unless those days were cut short, pay attention, no flesh would be saved. There are 7.9 billion people on this planet. How bad do you think it will have to get world depopulation? How bad do you think it would have to get world depopulation? How bad do you think it will have to get before people are able to say, Oh God, nobody's going to survive. Millions of people die every year. Millions of people die every year. No, it says unless those days were cut short, no flesh would be saved. Seven point nine billion people on the planet and this thing says that as a result of it this great tribulation no flesh will survive if not wait hold on but on account of the chosen ones yeah there's an accounting somebody is doing an accounting and it's on account of these chosen ones who are they not my problem i'm not here to worry about who they are i'm here to worry about the days being cut short. What do you mean it's not your problem? Shouldn't you know who they are because it's on account of them that those days will be cut short? So shouldn't you want to be around the people who is because of them that the days are going to be cut short? Well, technically, yeah. But that ain't the conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what I'm telling you. Didn't have to tell you. Didn't wasn't supposed to tell you. I'm letting you know. That's my protection. Because that much death and yes, I have seen it. As I told you guys before, this is not the pandemic that I saw. Well, the previous thing that we just went through, that's not the pandemic. What I saw was that pandemic. That's the pandemic I saw. That's the one I was telling you about in 2017 that I wasn't supposed to tell nobody about. Yeah, I was told to keep it to myself. And I care so much about people that I figured I would tell people hopefully they'll pay attention I can't tell you what's going to happen next because I'm not permitted this one is firm I'm not permitted to tell you what's going to happen next but I can tell you that my memory it I shouldn't even call it memory because it's not a loss of memory in other words I don't just put things any place I told you guys about the time I had three pair of glasses and I misplaced two of them. I Oh, no, I have another. I just bought another six pair of glasses, okay? Because I ain't no joke. I'm not going through this. I'm not because my eye muscles get too weak to the point where I can't read. To the point where I can't see because everything is blurry. So I had to get six pairs of glasses. I had other glasses in here. I have one that's too strong. But that's my emergency pair. And so that was the last pair that I had. 
and I did not want to be stuck with those on because they will eventually cause damage. So, ladies and gentlemen, in the back are six other pair of glasses I just bought. But I told you about how I misplaced one pair in one day and then misplaced another pair the same day within hours of each other and literally had to tell myself when I went to sleep at night, don't worry about it, you'll find it tomorrow. It's right where you left them. They did not walk up and disappear. It's right where you left them. Because this is the problem. It's not that I don't remember where I left something. It's that the place where that component was, the final component for the uh, security system, I went through there three times. <laughs> Literally, I went through that area three times. The only reason why I found it is because I tell myself, go back and check again. It's right where you were looking. Even though I had to check a whole area, it was right where I put it in the first place. Okay? Just wear my glasses the very next morning. Both glasses were directly across from each other. Directly across from each other. They both fell on the floor because I bent over to put something on the floor. And the glasses fell off my collar. So now, when I wear my glasses, I put them around my neck. So I let both sides of the glasses go around my neck. Because I'm a... I'm a... I'm a, I'm a, I'm my my neck is you know my neck, and so they stay around my neck like um, my mask used to stay around my neck 24 hours a day. That's so I didn't misplace it or forget it. So that story is for you all to know that what I'm about to go through is not for my detriment. That it's going to happen eventually. I'm going to stop doing videos, especially if it comes across that. I can't help you all anymore. That time is coming quicker than non-quick. Not going to happen tomorrow, not going to happen by the end of the year, but it will happen and I'm believing it will be before the middle of next year that I will be forced to stop. I'm not going to stop doing videos, I'm just going to not be able to do what I do what I do. And there's going to be a period where I will stop altogether because I won't make anybody sense. But then when everything is said and done, when that time comes for things to be right, then I'll be back. Hey! All right. I can't explain to you guys how things are going to happen. I, I know, I know, I know a lot of people can't handle that. Somebody knowing what's about to happen. But look at throughout all of our history. Look at throughout all of our history. Has not the true God revealed what was about to happen to people before it happened? Ladies and gentlemen, before that car hit me at 65 miles an hour, blindsiding me, hitting me so hard that the engine was next to my lap. Okay, you know how hard of an impact it would be to hit a, uh, what was that thing called? Uh, oh, that was a Ford Maverick. That was a four-door Ford Maverick. As a matter of fact, uh-uh. Let me put my glasses on. If y'all can handle it, I can handle it. I'm going to show y'all that Ford Maverick. Let's see, what is this? Uh, yeah, we can put it here. 1974 F-O-R-D M-A-V There you go. Four door. You see that right there? Four door. I don't want to buy one. <laughs> this is the Ford Maverick. Ladies and gentlemen, well, my car wasn't as old, but, you know, this is the Ford Maverick, and this thing is solid steel. Do you know how much pressure it would take to hit this car and put this engine in the front seat? That's what the person did to me. That fool hit me so hard. This, I think this is the model I had right here. So, I'm looking at the models here. This is the one I had right here. That fool hit me so hard, ladies and gentlemen, that this whole front end of the car was totaled. The engine, because he hit me from this corner, the engine ended up here with me. I wasn't wearing my seatbelt. Technically, it's a good thing I wasn't, but I ended up hitting my 
head on the mirror and hitting my chest against the steering wheel, which caused a mild heart attack. That's right, mild heart attack. Not a major heart attack, but a mild heart attack. Ladies and gentlemen, what I will tell you this about this particular car. Not only was it fast, not only did it have a nice engine in it, but it was sturdy. I put that car through a whole lot until that idiot hit me head on. Ladies and gentlemen, when he hit me, he was coming from a side street. Pretend this is the side street right in between these two. I'm coming down this street here, and as I'm coming down, all I see is something coming from this area very fast. So as I get closer, I start hitting my brakes here, right where you see me. And as I hit my brakes, I get here. He hits me. I spin around and around and around and land on the other side of the street. Okay. I saw that coming before it even happened. Went back and I even pointed it out to my friends. I say, look at my tire marks. I said, my tire marks start back here. And I said, look how far away that is from, it's a Ford Maverick. It didn't have anti-lock brakes. 1974, no anti-lock brakes. I said, look at how far that is from the intersection. I said, I'm hitting my brakes and I'm only doing 35 miles an hour. And I'm hitting my brakes as hard as I can because I see something coming. Next thing I know, he hits me. Here's the problem. Impossible. Because he's coming down this street. I can't see around the corner because there are houses here. So just imagine if I'm driving down that street and there's nothing but houses on this side. I can't see around the corner at all. But I did see him coming. Again, there that's one incident. It's not that's one of many. That's not the only one. So the relationship I have with my God is the relationship I have with my God. The relationship you have with your God is the relationship you have with yours. Okay, my relationship with him is he's allowed me to know because I asked him. I will tell you this because I don't hide this. This is not a secret. I told him, I said, Jehovah, you know how much I hate surprises. So please help me with showing me what's going to happen before it does so that I am not surprised. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a surprise, but I saw it coming. So I could brace for it and prepare for it. Had I not braced for that accident, my head would have hit his, the front of his car that came into my car. Because he would have hit me right in the side of the vehicle. But because I had already hit my brakes, he hit the front of the vehicle. The passenger very front end and the passenger side. That's what pushed the engine into my seat. Had I not hit my brakes here, he would have hit me on the side. I would not have survived because my head would have went to the side and would have hit his car. And that, I wouldn't have survived. So, eight times I should be dead. And I'm here. Well, one time I actually did die, but I'm here. We hear all these people, oh, I spent 20 minutes dead, and look at what I saw. Really? You want us to believe that, that you saw something. You're dead. How can you see anything when you're dead? Dead man tells no lies. Y'all heard it. So when was the last time y'all saw anybody dead? Oh, there's this little kid. Yes. And they only tell you what they imagined, what they had already believed. Go ahead. Talk to them. Those are the people who believed that they were going to somebody's heaven. And so that's what they saw. At least that's what they say they saw. Ladies and gentlemen, does anybody know how long it takes a person to dream? It's a couple of seconds. Matter of fact, that dream that you think took all night, that dream only took a couple of seconds to have. So these people who are believing that they saw heaven, and I say believing... Because they, they did see something, but they don't realize that they did not see anything other than what they imagined. All I saw was the light that was above the operating table. I do not remember them throwing me into 
No ice. And I didn't have an outer body experience. Why? Because the Bible tells us that we don't have a immortal soul. That's that's what them stupid religions teach. Oh, uh, don't do that. Y'all know better. Y'all know better. Start me off, because I'll show y'all everything. I will show y'all everything. Why? Because that's my job. My job is to show people what I'm talking about. My job is not to open and close my mouth and then walk away thinking that everybody's supposed to believe it because I said it. Last one. I promise if I bring up another thing, I'll say I'll show it in another video some other time in the future. I'm going to go to Ezekiel. Some people know where I'm going already. The 18th chapter. Why the 18th chapter? Because it explains what happens to the body when a person dies. People think that when they die, they go to him. Look, all souls to me they belong. But what's a soul? Is a soul a spirit? Ladies and gentlemen, if a soul was a spirit, then that means angels are souls. Angels are not souls. The scripture, remember old King Cole was a merry old soul? A merry old soul was he? Let's do that. I'm just going to type it in. O-L-D-K-I-N-G. I'm trying to see if it already... Ah, there it is, Old King Cole lyrics. Nursery rhyme. Because we know that there is some commonality to a nursery rhyme. The most counter modern version of the rhyme is Old King Cole was a merry old soul. A merry old soul was he. Ladies and gentlemen, in ancient times, they didn't believe that you had a soul. They believed that you were the soul. You never heard the phrase, watch this. 70 S O U L Well no sorry souls P A R Now you see I put 70 souls nearly 200 or uh, 25,000 perished constructing the canal Interesting huh now, I said the word soul, but Google automatically knew what I meant. Then this one says, thousands of prisoners lost their lives. 258 souls perished. When the Bible uses the phrase soul, it is referring to the person's life. That's why it says, to me, all souls belong. I didn't say this. This was a common understanding. It wasn't until these churches got involved that they started making the soul into a spirit. Look, all the souls, to me they belong. The soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son. Ladies and gentlemen, we know that this is not talking about a spirit, because he's talking about a Father and a Son. To me they belong. The soul who sins, a spirit can't sin, not in the form of, we have a spirit inside of us. How is the so-called spirit that's supposed to be inside of us going to sin? What's it going to do? Is the one that will die. Now let's show you that he's talking about the body, the person. Suppose that a man is righteous and does what is just and right. And he does not eat idolatrous sacrifices on the mountains. And he does not look to disgusting idols of the house of Israel he does not defile his neighbor's wife so it's not his spirit that it's talking about it's talking about him himself okay now we got one more number 20 the soul who sins is the one who will die wait a minute the soul well I thought a spirits don't die so if a person had a spirit inside of them then how could their spirit die the soul or spirit who sins is the one who will die. If we're going to say this word means spirit, which it does not, go back and look at the Greek word and see what soul means. Is the one who will die. A son cannot bear no guilt because of the error of the father, and a father will bear no guilt because of the error of the son. The righteous one, the righteousness of the righteous one, will be accounted. Uh oh, I'm missing. To him alone, and the wickedness of the wicked one will be accounted to him alone. This is talking about the person. It's not talking about a spirit. I know there'll be there those people out there who want to disagree. 
who want to disagree. I said that was going to be the last one. I said that if I had another one to show y'all, but I told you every scripture is backed by at least two. So we have two scriptures that agree in the same chapter. Now we're going to go to Ecclesiastes and we're going to go to the ninth chapter. Why? Because Solomon was a wise old man, wasn't he? Didn't, didn't he have some knowledge? Well, he has two verses here. He had e Ezekiel, the prophet, had two verses there. And this one, Solomon, who was also a prophet, shh, don't tell nobody. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing at all. The dead know nothing at all. Nor do they have any more reward, because the memory of them is forgotten. They don't have any more reward. They, they can't benefit from anything. They don't have any more prices to pay. And their memory, they have forgotten everything and the people who knew them soon forget. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For there is no work, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave. King James Version says Hades or Sheol. It doesn't say Hades. I apologize. It says Sheol because what happens is the Greek word for this right here, the grave, is Sheol which is just the common grave of mankind. See, it says right there where you are going. So when a person dies, this is talking about people who die. It says there's no knowledge, so they don't even know they're dead. That's how I know it's their imagination. Because there is no work, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave. There's no knowledge. So that means they don't know anything. How could they? So when they talk about, oh, I died, and I, I saw this, and I saw that, and, I, and God said he didn't want me. Nope, he said they were all filled. said no vacancies. said when they had a vacancy, he called me. You see how much sense that makes? Ladies and gentlemen, I don't go beyond what's written. The scriptures already tells us that there is no one doing what these people say to do. Now, Jesus did say he was going to take some people they were bought from the earth, but this is not talking about that. This is talking about common grave, common man. See, grave, common grave of mankind. It's talking about that common grave. These individuals will eventually meet that common resurrection, but uh -uh, not now. Okay, so with that being the case, let me shut this down. I take the time to let you guys know what I'm going through. So when I be mentioning about how tired I am or how fatigued I am or telling you I'm on fumes, that's me letting you know that I'm doing more damage to myself, which is going to lead to what I told you about. I already see it happening. I already see that the amount of time that I'm spending, don't worry about it. This is me. I choose this. This is my choice, not yours. Do not remind me of it. Do not tell me about how you feel for me. I'm not asking for that. I know what I'm doing. Let me do what I do and take the information, appreciate the information. Remember I said all I want is for people to respect my time. Okay? I got everything I need. There is nothing that I want. Go ahead. If anybody could offer you anything right now at this very moment, what would you ask for? Okay, guess what? I don't have anything to ask for. I like the relationship I have with my God. He and I are on the same page. As a matter of fact, it's a work in progress. Anyway, I have all I need. I have my problems just like everybody and their grandfather. But you know something? I'm all right. And the rest of you are going to be all right. The only thing I'm going to make a suggestion to you for is that you don't give up. Fill out those complaints if you have a mortgage. Download it. Fill it out. What can it hurt? It ain't costing you nothing. What is wrong with people is what I say. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be doing a video shortly, probably tomorrow, explaining about the filling out of the document and where we're headed and why we're headed there with those documents, and then I'll do the one on credit. But please understand this. The reason why you're filling out those documents, because each one of these agencies what you don't know is every government agency must have a grievance process let me type that in google real quick and then we can go and i'm just going to type in that phrase right there I've got to turn on the light on the keyboard yeah
Thank you. I don't, I don't care about that. I, I had to get half and I didn't feel like going backwards. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I can put every government agency must have a grievance process is because that's the First Amendment. Thank you for correcting me, Google. Oh, you want to do procedure. Each federal agency is required to set up a grievance procedure for employees who are not covered by labor agreements with the union. Grievance procedures give employees an opportunity to get an objective review of individual group complaints about work conditions and about employment. You see, this is about employees. So if they have to have it for employees, they have to have it for you and me. Just trust me on that. Provided that any grievance not satisfactorily settled under the negotiable grievance procedure shall be subject to binding arbitration, which may be, this is the FLRA. Now, I don't know what the FLRA is, but they got a grievance procedure, and their grievance procedure has an arbitration clause. Okay? All government offices, all government agencies, all government departments must have a grievance procedure. Every one of them. And that includes the real estate, real estate, section of the Secretary of State. That includes the Attorney General's office. That includes the courts. That includes Congress. They all must have a grievance process. Ladies and gentlemen, you know how you call and say, well, I need to file a complaint. You got a complaint form? No, you just sent us a letter. You notice how they always say that? So we created a letter for you. I did that to give you a shortcut. By the way, the Administrative Procedures Act, grievance procedure. Administrative Procedures Act, Grievance Procedure. All government administrative agencies must have a grievance procedure. Okay, provided that any grievance not satisfactorily settled under the negotiable grievance procedure shall be subject to binding arbitration, which may be invoked. That's the same code that we were reading earlier. All agencies must have a grievance procedure. Did you not know that all companies must have a grievance procedure? We even have one at SACOM. SACOM, there's a grievance procedure. That's what the support department is. When you complain to them and they don't respond, then you go to admin. But if you don't go to support and you go straight to admin, you get nothing coming. Sorry. And everybody who goes to support, they eventually get everything taken care of. Right? Because we'd be talking about it. So... We completed the complaint forms for you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting ready to start the computer over anyway. Um, well, I'm getting ready to turn the computer off. Uh, and I'll put this video up like I did the video earlier uh, this morning. I'm going to put this video up tomorrow as well. Uh, so I'm going to wait overnight. And no, you know what? I, I might. Yeah, I might let it stay on and put up the video because I've been on. This computer has been on since 8 o'clock this morning, and it's about to be 8 o'clock in about another 40 minutes. So, ladies and gentlemen, I've been doing 12 hours a day at the least for the last three and a half months. And I'm about to start taking a break because it's not beneficial. I'm glad I got the complaints done. I cannot begin to tell you how much stress getting those complaints done, and then to have people... I told you, the first thing somebody wanted to do was to criticize and say, well, I'm going to go ahead and take it, and I'm going to make some amendments. What the flying fart? You haven't even read it yet. You don't even know what it contains, and you want to make amendments? Literally, that's what I went through. And then, right after I finish all of it, I get a guy talking about he's been doing something for 40 years and telling me it ain't going to work. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you how much it ain't going to work. The Private Attorney General Act, known as the Civil Rights Act of 1866, says that if we bring together a group complaint representing the general public, 
to the Attorney General's office and we bring together a cognizable claim of denial of access and deprivation of rights under color of law and the Attorney General says, nah, man, we ain't taking that. Sh then I get to act as the private Attorney General and I get to prosecute the case myself on behalf of the group. And I get to subpoena and I get to call a grand jury. Uh oh. Did I say too much? Well, I'll be doing a video on that tomorrow explaining that to you guys. I keep saying there's an art to my madness. Well, we already tried that. You ain't tried this. I know for a fact you ain't tried this because if you tried it, we would know about it. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who stayed this long in this video, I appreciate it. So I'm going to give you something. This is not bragging about what I know and what I'm capable of. In 2012, I did this thing called the Defrauded Homeowners of America. Pulled people together, did videos, did seminars, told people about the Defrauded Homeowners of America. We had so many people sign up for our Defrauded Homeowners of America. Told them what we were going to do is file a lawsuit against these ignorant mother... Remember that? Ladies and gentlemen, we filed the lawsuit. We put together all of our paper that we needed. Everything. Everything! And when we filed our lawsuit, ladies and gentlemen, we did it with the Attorney General's Office under the Private Attorney General's Act. The Attorney General took the case 2012. That's right. You heard about it. All of you heard about it. The Attorney General took our case. The Defrauded Homeowners of America. The, the, the Defrauded Homeowners of America lawsuit. Got to close. That, that's some confirmation from my uh, email there from location from the Ama Ama Esama. It won't let me close it. Oh, well. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention because I need you guys to pay attention to this. Not only did the government take over the case, this was a case that the current vice president, Kamala, Harris was involved in directly and so were the other 49 attorney generals for the United States well 48 plus the attorney general for the United States at the time Eric Holder's office and they got a 26 billion dollar settlement ladies and gentlemen I didn't get a dime the reason why I didn't get a dime because the law says that if the government recovered, I was supposed to get part of that. I'm the one who brought the information to their attention saying that we had a group, put together the group, and did not get a dime. I'll be going for my pennies because I'm supposed to have gotten, I believe it is 10%. $26 billion, I was supposed to get 10%. I'm not in a rush. Yes, I can prove. Not only do I still have the videos, not only do I still have a copy of the original lawsuit, not only do I still have the letter to the Attorney General's office, not only do I still have the original filings. You see what I'm saying? I'm not concerned about being right. I'm not concerned about doing things this way or that way. Go back and look. The Attorney General did it on behalf of the... Well, they said they were doing it on behalf of the investors. You follow me? They said they were doing it on behalf of the investors, but let me explain so that you guys understand that they weren't doing it on behalf of the investors. Because part of that settlement, the $26 billion, they arranged for it to go to the homeowners. Just It went to agencies. And the agencies divided it up among themselves, and the homeowners got very little. I'm not going to let that happen this time. That's what happened that time. And again, I want you to pay attention right after I said I was gonna do that what did they do Did they not fabricate put me in somebody's institution for 22 months and then when I got out put me right back in while all of this was going on I know who I am I know what I'm capable of I know what I did and I know that yes I did tell everybody that we were going to be doing a class action lawsuit and it was the defrauded homeowners of America ladies and gentlemen the defrauded homeowners of America arbitration that was done that 
we're still going after it. The Deferred Homeowners of America, you are getting your tax credits. Okay? I just have to, over the next three weeks, that's why we're just going to be focusing on tax credits. We're going to be focusing on tax credits for the next three weeks. Over the next three weeks, we got to put together the paperwork and the tax credit transfers for each of you. So, I want you to bear with me. Uh, now, I said over the next three weeks, we're not going to get it to you within three weeks. I have to train staff over the next three weeks. Do you understand? I have to help other people know what I know because I can't do it for each of you. It's too much work. So I need people helping me. So I need you. No, you can't help. Okay, we gave people an opportunity to come and be a part of this. And nope, you can't do it now. Too late. So I'll be doing videos educating you and the rest of the public. But just trust me on this. By the way, this video, all I was supposed to be is doing a video telling you about that lawsuit in 2012 that we filed. The only problem, ladies and gentlemen, <sighs> quite honestly, I forgot. So I started the video out and I just decided to just talk about me. Talk about my memory problems because that's what was on my mind because I couldn't remember what I was supposed to, but I had already said it three times that it, that's what I was going to talk about. So, like I said, with my memory, eventually it does come back around. Okay? I am grateful for who I am as a person. Like I said, I love who I am as a person. And as I told my mother, I tell all of you, if my father was anything like me, that man right there has every ounce of respect that I could possibly give a person. Just that simple. My father and I did not really have a relationship. I didn't hate my father. I didn't dislike my father. We just never really talked. I was a quiet child, but my father, like my mother said, and she was right, and I agree with her. We had the exact same personality. I, I am more like my father than any of my brothers. I am more like my father than any of my brothers. I can say that hands down. And I didn't know a lot about my father, ladies and gentlemen. Because we didn't spend a lot of time together. But I do know one thing. Everybody who knew him, they've all made the same comment that I'm just like him. They literally have made that exact comment. My mother <laughs> couldn't stand it. Because after my father died, she was more hard on me than any of my brothers and sisters. Because she told me that I reminded her too much of him. I understood it. But, yeah. I just, I had my one rule. You curse me out, and that's the last cursing out that you'll ever do. That goes for any of you. I don't tolerate people cursing me out, ever. I will write you off in a split second. Why? Because the scriptures tell me I get to maintain my association. That's my choice who I associate with. So it ain't a matter of hatred. No, 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 I'll leave you to hate yourself. But I will stop talking to you and stop speaking with you and stop having anything to do with you in a split second. All of the people who've gotten angry and mad, you know what? I just see this picture right here. There's a person right there and there's a person right there and there's some persons right there. I just, I really, I just started staring at it and I just started seeing the persons. And now I don't know what that is. It looks like a tree, but I don't see no other things over here. And we know this is a doctored picture, but you know, I like it. Because that right there looks all righty then. You know, get caught up in this stuff and you, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all for taking the time. And thank you for allowing me the time to explain a little bit more about me. Yes, I reveal things that most people would never tell about themselves. But it is beneficial that people know what I go through as far as memory. Now, there'll be people who say, well, then if you have a bad memory, then you can't do this, you can't... You don't tell me what I'm not able to do. I've been able to do everything thus far without people realizing. Oh, I realize! Shut the... Up! Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, all this time, many of you knew that there was something. You know, he doesn't stay on point too much, but he, he gets back to the point, but he, he travels off point. You better believe, for the most part, it's because I have so much, and this is the truth. I have so much going on in my head. I'm thinking about 15 to 20 things at one time. I am doing more multitasking inside my head 
you guys would not believe that today I've had to shut down. Look at all these windows that are open. I had to shut down over 60 of them through all the different browsers. One browser, two browser, three browser, four browser, five browser, six browser, seven browsers. I had to shut down over 60 windows. I had to let that information go because I said to myself, eventually I'll get back to that stuff. Okay, that is seven browsers. And of the seven, I had to, well, I didn't open this one, I didn't open this one, I didn't open that one. So out of the four browsers, I got rid of 60 windows. Okay, if that doesn't make sense to you, please understand that the way I operate this computer, and I promise you, this computer goes through a whole lot. You keep hearing me talk about my system's resources. I'm multitasking all day long on this computer. The only thing is right now I'm not multitasking okay and that's a good thing sorry that's me hooking up or right. yeah we'll let you do that that's me doing the crazy talk and there are a couple of more crazy talk things that so while this video is loading up I'm gonna install the other crazy talk software and then I'll start using the crazy talk I was supposed to do it uh, we'd already done the innocent videos but Google is Google has really blocked us out of the SACOM YouTube channel ladies and gentlemen seriously and I don't don't joke with you at all about that they have locked us out of the SACOM YouTube channel and it is interesting the way they've done that we're gonna let you go appreciate you guys taking the time ask that you have a good day have a good life have a good night and we'll talk to you later take care of yourselves everyone goodbye